As the COVID-19 crisis continues, testing has emerged as one of the key components to combat the spread of the disease, helping schools and businesses to reopen safely across the country. And here with an update on how testing is going is Dr. Blythe Adams Adamson, former member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force and advisor to Testing for America, a nonprofit aimed at solving the testing crisis. Nice to see you again, doctor. And we'll talk specifically about New York City schools set to reopen the elementary public schools set to reopen next Monday with weekly testing. Tell us how that testing will work and why testing is a viable option for school systems to reopen this way. One of the differences now with New York City schools reopening is that they'll be requiring informed consent from parents to be able to test all kids that are returning back to school in person. And this is really important because we need the testing results to be representative of all the kids that are really in class, not just the parents that had opted into testing previously. And now we'll see weekly testing of about 20% of New York City students every week. Weekly testing, but you said you're, you're a proponent of something called pooled testing. Maybe this is something a lot of people haven't heard a lot about. I'm not sure how much of it is taking place, but you're essentially mixing samples, if you will. Instead of testing people individually, you're kind of testing them as a group. Tell me how this could help move us along. Well, it's not a new idea that we've had during the pandemic. Uh, pooling is something that's been happened for a long time. You know, with HIV, we pool samples uh, very often to find out if there's a positive. And it makes a lot of sense cost-wise to reduce costs. But right now, we'll have information each week about 20% of the students. But we could, for the same number of tests run, instead pool some of those samples together. And if we do it in a smart way, we'll end up having more information that's very actionable. So that if you get, if you pool the kids together in a classroom and you get a positive hit on a test result, then you know immediately close the class and you know contact tracing investigations can begin and you don't necessarily have to close the whole school. Well, let's talk about potential testing shortages because a nonpartisan report has warned that over half the country may have testing shortages. We're nearly a year now into this pandemic. Why are we still dealing with shortages when testing is such an important part of moving forward with our economy and life as we knew it? Well, just over the last week, there was an expected surge in the demand for testing because so many people wanted to travel for Thanksgiving and have the assurance that they were really negative before getting onto that flight and showing up at their Thanksgiving table. And we're going to see the consequences of a lot of those traveling decisions in two to three weeks when we're expecting to see many cases that are coming from those transmissions. And it's really going to be a challenge for Americans to then decide, should we be traveling during Christmas? And do we expect to see the same surge in demand for assurance testing uh, at the end of December as people are deciding to travel and spend time with their family? So, you know, these um, the that extra demand for testing really is a lot of it related to the holidays. And you're a former member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. A lot of uh, news was made here, and a lot of talk lately about Dr. Scott Atlas, who was a controversial member. He just resigned from that task force. But aside from uh, Dr. Atlas, um, is this task force right now still effective? Um, or is it a lame duck task force right now that's just waiting for the next administration? Well, you know, I've been really forward looking. Right now, the, these problems are still very, very hard to solve. We've tried lots of different things. And with, you know, new ideas coming in, I'm looking forward to seeing how this new group and new administration is able to try to be creative and solve some of these tough problems. Uh, but it's great to see CDC really stepping up as a leader in the prioritization of vaccines. Uh, and guiding us and the policies that are going forward for next year. And Dr. Adams, and uh, I asked if it's still effective and kind of a lame duck now. You said you're looking forward to the next administration, but do we need this task force still to be functioning no matter what? Absolutely. And continuing to be open and transitioning the knowledge and lessons learned of the, you know, policies tried the you know, supply chain challenges so that we can have as seamless of a transition as possible and not lose any of the valuable lessons learned.
lessons, momentum, Dr. Adamson, I think we all agree that needs to be a good transition, need to be going on right now. But it's good to see you, appreciate you and your knowledge as always. We'll talk to you again, all right? Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.